I've received endless requests to unbox the Corsair H70. So here it is, the Corsair H70, and I'm going to unbox it. So let's start with the CPU compatibility. You can see that right on the front. It is compatible with LGA 775, 1156, and 1366. And it also comes with mounting hardware for AM2 and AM3. So it's compatible with every socket out there that matters right now. They've got a nice little graph on the back that shows how it dramatically outperforms your CPU's stock heatsink. And uh, I can tell you this, they don't have this on their graph, but they should because it's probably going to be quieter than your stock heatsink, especially under load. So here on the side, we've got the full specs. You've got the radiator dimensions, which is 120 by 152 by 48 millimeters. You've got your fan specifications here, so 50 to 61 CFM at 26 to 31.5 decibels. So it's not super quiet, but it's not that loud either. And I mean, really, when you want maximum performance out of a CPU cooler, you sometimes have to make compromises as far as uh, quietness goes. So I'm just going to try and figure out how the box opens exactly before I start cutting away at the shrink wrap here. So I'm going to cut there, and then I'm going to cut here. I've had quite a few questions about my new knife. Yes, it is a Spyderco knife. I don't know exactly which one it is, but there's their little logo. So uh, I'm just going to slice that open here. Now I think this is going to come up. Yes. Oh, look, another little H70 logo there. Corsair really is good at packaging, I'll give them that. So they've managed to take the H70, which is a, uh, a slightly bigger, because it has an extra fan in it, cooler. Uh, it's a better performing cooler than the H50, and they put it in a smaller box. It's like, brilliant. So here's a little Corsair solutions guide. They show you their memory, cooling, power supplies, chassis, and then on the other side, you got flash and storage with SSDs. They really do have a very complete lineup these days. It wasn't that long ago that uh, they just had RAM, basically. So they want you to deal with their tech support, okay, instead of getting in touch with the store. They have a quick start guide here, which shows you how to set up the H70 in only seven easy steps. So maybe we'll refer to this a little bit as we talk about the H70. Here's the AMD mounting hardware. Okay, so it's a little mounting ring thing. We'll have a look at this when we actually see it. Here's 775. So this shows you the parts you need for LGA 775. Here's 1156 and here is 1366. So they show you which holes to use on the back plate and then how to configure it to, uh, to go in the right place on the hold down clip. Oh, and it says H50 on it. No, that's okay. We understood what they meant. We know it works for the H72. Okay, so here we've got a couple of little adapters. Because it has two fans, uh, you might want to use one of these. So this way you can plug two fans into your CPU fan header. So you can see one of them just has power and the other one has power as well as an RPM monitor. So that means that your fan header on your motherboard will pick up the RPMs from the one fan, but it'll provide the same power to both fans. So that way you can get all the information you need and power two fans in one fell swoop. Here are your little silencing adapters. So you can throw those on there if you want the whole thing to run just a little bit quieter than it otherwise would have. So there you go, you plug those in like that and then you plug your fans into those. So the whole thing comes off your motherboard like that. I love how everything Corsair does is black. So you got black wires, black connectors, black sleeving, very nice. Okay, next we have all of our mounting hardwares. Here we go. So this is a backplate for 775, 1156, and 1366. You see they've got the three different holes and they've got them all helpfully labeled for which sockets you want to use. Uh, next we have aha, all the little pieces of hardware that those diagrams were for. So you put those through the Intel mounting plate, okay, in the way that is demonstrated on that uh, on that helpful sheet. And then you put your little uh, your little foamy sticky bits on the back of the back plate, which go here. All right. And then you put the little pegs, which are finally here, these little silver guys, through the back of the back plate, screw the whole thing together. Shouldn't take you longer than about eight minutes. That's my estimation. Here's your AM, oh no, this is not AMD mounting hardware. This is fan mounting hardware. And then I guess AMD mounting hardware is also in there, but you can see there's a Corsair backplate as well as an AMD hold down for the H70 or H50. I guess this would also work with based on uh, how it works. It would work just fine for either. Here's all of our fan mounting hardware. So we've got washers and screws and those screws will bolt the fans onto the radiator, which is the biggest improvement on the H70. This radiator is 
very thick compared to the H50. The H50 is probably about this thick, and the H70 is this thick. Now, cooling is not rocket science. I mean, rockets need to be cooled, don't get me wrong. So there is cooling involved in rocket science, but cooling isn't rocket science. More surface area is better. So Corsair, instead of opting to increase the size of the radiator this way, so you can have like a dual 120 millimeter, 120 millimeter slim radiator, Corsair has instead decided to go with a thicker radiator, maintain that 120 millimeter compatible mount so that you can mount it in most cases, but still get more fins in here, more surface area, and thus better cooling. Now one of the disadvantages of having a nice tight fin structure like this and a thick radiator is that it's highly resistant to air being pulled through it. If you can't push or pull air efficiently through the radiator, it's not going to cool very well. So that's why Corsair has implemented a push-pull system. So that means when you mount the H70 in the back of your case, you will mount it like this. Corsair recommends you draw fresh air in from the outside, although you can configure it either way, but you'll have the one fan blowing fresh air through the radiator from the outside and then you'll have the other fan configured on the other side drawing that fresh air through the rad and then blowing it into the case. So you see it's configured with one pushing air through and one pulling air through. Two fans. So it ends up quite thick. You're going to want to make sure you have enough clearance in your case to have something this large uh, from the back of your case so it's going to maybe stick over your CPU socket a little bit but Corsair thought of that too. And this is what's so clever. Because it's so thick, it might have, um, you might have had issues with the original H50 CPU block pump unit uh, clearing it. Now they have a nice low profile H70 CPU block and pump. So it's got pre applied thermal paste. And from my testing uh, with the H50, this stuff is really good. So there's no need to replace that with an aftermarket paste uh, on your first first installation. Once you've used it, then you should clean it off and put on a new paste. But you can see that the H50 is probably about this tall with the, uh, and then maybe even a little bit more once you have the tubing sticking out of it. But the H70 is only about, wow, that's about an inch and change tall. And then they've got the tubing coming out at a bit of an angle here. And these are actually flexible. Look at that. So you can mount this in like the smallest, smallest profile possible like this. So you can actually have the tubing coming out at an angle like that, so you can mount it almost under anything. And the pump is powered by just a three pin fan connector. So you could plug that into just like a system fan plug and you'd be uh, on your way. It's got a nice little Corsair uh, shiny badge on the front of it. And I think that pretty much concludes my unboxing of the Corsair H70. Thank you for checking it out. And don't forget to subscribe to my video blog.